Hello and welcome to Exploring Personal Pedagogy. My name is Glenn Denny, also known as The Male Practitioner, and I'm delighted today to be joined by the founder of Nursery Nook, an enthusiastic and passionate teacher and trainer, and the undisputed champion of loose parts play, it's the wonderful James Tunnell. Welcome, James. Hello, Glenn. That is a lovely introduction. I love to think that I love that I like um, I'm the queen of uh, loose parts or something. I quite like the idea. Thanks. <laughs> I'll have to get you a crown. Obviously, I'll make it out of loose parts. Obviously, fabulous. That's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, James, tell me a bit about your background. How did you come to work in early years? Okay, so my um, my journey. Oh, it's relatively simple, I suppose. Um, when I was at college, I was a millennium volunteer, and I worked in a local primary school. I really enjoyed it. Um, we volunteered every Friday, uh, every Wednesday afternoon for a few hours. I worked in Key Stage 1. Um, I, quite, I quite liked it. I thought, okay, this is quite interesting. Maybe I'll get into teaching. Mm -hmm. And so I did my qualifications. I applied for uni. But I thought, I'll do a PGCE. Um, I'll do history first because I love history. Then my results came in. And honestly, I got the results to get in. But I'd applied to Essex. Now I'm from Teesside. That's pretty far. And it hit me and I thought, I can't do this. Nope, not having it, having it. So I decided to take a gap year, but then I continued to volunteer through my gap year. And it was in that time in my gap year that I started to spend more time in the early years. Mm -hmm. um, because I dismissed it early on as being, if I'm honest, I dismissed it as being a little bit boring because I was so used to having um, time in Key Stage 1 where I'd have activities to do, whereas when I spent a few minutes really in reception and nursery in my volunteer school, I had been just sort of sat there. I mean, you know it yourself, sometimes when you go in, you, you kind of feel a bit lost, don't you? Um, mm -hmm. But in this gap year, I spent a bit more time. I got used to the idea of what I could actually do with the children, which was really nice. Mm -hmm. And then I decided to reapply for uni and I applied just straight into teaching. Did it, did my four year training, um, got my degree. Um, and I decided, right, okay, I'm going to work in reception. That's it. I'm going to work in reception. I love early years, but nursery's too hard. Ah, I can't do it. Applied for loads of reception jobs. Um, and I, I got offered a job in nursery. And so I ummed and I had and thought, I've got to do it. I've got to take a job because, you know, it's at that time of the year. I've got to have a job. Yeah. And I, I started in September and I wasn't convinced I was going to like it. Um, I fell in love within a week because I just love the freedom of having a nursery to look after to teach mm -hmm. in whereas even in reception it's lovely but you do have you're a little bit more closed down in terms of you've got to achieve x y and z by the end of the year mm -hmm. whereas in nursery I felt like I could do so much more um I had loads of space I had loads of freedom I could be really creative it was amazing so I graduated in 2011 um which isn't really that long ago considering but um I have always been one of those people who likes to sort of carry on my learning elsewhere mm -hmm. so even in my, in my first year um, and it was a really difficult NQT year that I had. I decided to do my research. I started to take pictures of the activities I was doing. And at this time, social media was becoming much more of a big deal for um, educators. Um, I was on Twitter quite early on. There was only about three of us on Twitter. We had a lovely little, <laughs> our, our <laughs> weekly chats with just three of us. Um, it was Deborah Fielding and um, Stimulating Learning with Rachel. And it was us, us basically us three that would chat to each other. Um, and then I started a Facebook page. And because of all of this, I started to share my practice a lot more. And it meant that in the sort of the last nine years, really, I've been able to develop myself quite a lot, mm -hmm. learn a lot of new skills, connect with people. And I feel like the generation before us, in their nine years, they might not have achieved that much because um, they didn't have the same tools at their disposal, really. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's definitely like the, the whole landscape of education has changed because we're reliant a lot more on online technologies as well, which is the same for the pupils as well as the teachers, isn't it? Yes, definitely. definitely. Um, I mean, there's definitely a, a skills gap. I think um, when I meet uh, practitioners from um, reception classes or nursery classes and I talk about certain things they could do online, there is a very much a gap in terms of what they um what I'm telling them that they could do and what they actually will go away and do. Mm -hmm. I think especially it's coming up at the moment with lots of online training. I think some practitioners are a bit reluctant to do that. Um, that being said, it's still working really well. Some people will actually engage with it. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So in terms of 
the here and now where are you now in sort of you know from when you started to now where are you in terms of your early years practice where what, what changes have you seen in that um i feel like it's come along a long way so um when i first started um i was big on the use of lots of color titles in different areas i was really believing in this idea of reading and writing lots in the provision areas Whereas now I'm more about the natural learning. So I don't mean natural as in natural resources, but mm -hmm. I mean following the child's natural yeah. um, disposition to learning. So if a child wants to go and explore something, I'll follow that through. Whereas before, when I first started, we did have an idea about kind of what we wanted to achieve. Even though we allowed them a little bit more freedom, mm -hmm. we still had to kind of guide them towards, oh, we're going to guide you towards 2D shapes here. or We're going to guide you towards this, this picture book. So yeah, it's a bit... Um, it's a bit different, um, but I feel like I change every single year and that's the benefit of what I do. So I do a lot of training and consultancy work, but I also work in a school still and I'm able to develop my practice continuously that way. So it's kind of like for your consultancy work, you've got the practice to make the preaching stand up really, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I make sure that any training session I deliver, I bring it back to my own practice. Mm -hmm. I've been on lots of training sessions where people talk about airy-fairy ideas and theory, and that's lovely, but actually you need to see it in practice. You need to be able to adapt it to match your own culture in your classroom, because if you don't do that, um, you're just going to run into obstacles. It's, mm -hmm. Schools and nurseries are very complex settings, so we can't just take um, one particular idea and roll with it. We've got to make sure it, it matches our own identity. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So in terms of now your own personal pedagogy, I mean, obviously that would have grown and developed from when you first, you know, when you were an NQT and to now. What has kind of influenced that kind of growth and development in your own pedagogy? Um, I think obviously it's the social media that's really influenced it quite a lot because I'm able to look at other people's, other people's ideas. Um, I think if you were to link it back to a particular approach, mm -hmm. I think in the UK we're a little bit um, we're a little bit shallow on the amount of approaches we've actually got. I mean, there's lots of amazing theorists out there, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But I think if you asked the people on the ground every day, the people who are doing this job in the classrooms, all the settings, to talk about theorists, they'd look at you like, huh? Eh? Um, I mean, I studied them at uni. That being said, there's, there's quite a lot that I don't remember. I forget mm -hmm. things quite easily. Yeah. Um, I think we're really lacking on sort of a, a, a British approach to the early years. We, we, we have our curriculum, or rather we have our development matters, we design our curriculum, we have some kind of local approaches here and there, but the majority of us don't have a distinctive um, style that we've developed as a nation. We sort yeah. of pull in bits from here and there. Some of us are quite Reggio inspired. Other mm -hmm. people say the Reggio. That drives me insane. You can't be Reggio in the UK. There's a, there's a reason Reggio works in Italy. Um, it's okay to be inspired by these places, but mm -hmm. we need to develop yeah. our own culture. And it can happen on a national scale, that would be lovely, but I also think we need to think about it on a local scale. Being from the North, being from Teesside, it's a very industrial place. I'm very big on um, trying to reflect that, the landscape, trying to reflect the culture of it, because it's a very different place than say rural Devon is. So we need to think about, do our nurseries in these places actually reflect the culture of the places that we're working in so i know yourself you work in a nursery chain don't you mm -hmm. so there's like some of you're in london some of you're in york where you are and obviously your nurseries will be quite different because you'll have to reflect the the culture of where you're at very you know? nice so, yeah um yeah definitely okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so it, it, it's kind of like a similar theme that different people i've spoken to is like there is no you know you don't just follow one it's there's a little mm. pinch of and a dash of this and you know i mm. think that's kind of the best approach really um to kind of make up our own belief system and our own kind of ideals of what the way we want to teach the children that we have mm. I, th I think there's some things that we can't be escaped from in the uk i mean i think generally we all follow kind of a social constructivist approach in general mm -hmm. the majority of us do that so the majority of us understand the value i apologize my dog hates everyone and you go back in the background <laughs> um i think all of us follow some kind of process where we believe in the value of in interactions between a child and an adult mm -hmm. so i think we've got that in place um i think some of us believe in that more than others beyond that i do agree i think there's there's a lot of 
of this gray area. I think there's a lot of things that we could be filling in here. We could mm -hmm. be developing our own approach. We've got some amazing people who've worked in our country who've come up with some lovely ideas. To some extent, we've got something similar. So we've got, say, like the curiosity approach mm -hmm. um, that follows sort of a very open-ended um, idea in your classroom, which I think is amazing. It's not unique and it's not necessarily based on a unique uh, theory, but it draws mm -hmm. in lots of other theorists in the past, which works really, really well. I think there's a look personally i think there's a bit of a danger when we follow things like the curiosity approach in that we follow it wholesale like i said before we need to make sure that what we're doing though matches our personal belief and also mm -hmm. from, our, from our children i mean we've all we've all got different children haven't we and yeah i've seen some settings where they've introduced lots of open-ended resources but the children have come from places where they only have maybe mcdonald's toys at home so they go from a setting a home setting where they've got all these toys to play with that are made out of plastic which mm -hmm. are very specific and closed ended into a setting where they've got things like teapots to play with and teacups and they look and think oh i can't touch that it's an ornament um because they don't appreciate what they can do with it yeah that makes sense definitely mm -hmm. well jane thank you very much for talking to me today it's been interesting to hear kind of where your journey has gone and where it kind of puts you at for now but i'm quite sure mm -hmm. that's going to develop in the future Yes, definitely. Yeah, we'll do. Well, James, thank you very much. Thanks, Ken. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.